going on? Welcome back to the Wild Podcast. I am your host, Jeffrey Zamore. Thank you for taking the time to join and spend another another episode with me. I truly appreciate it. As always, man, I always got to make sure that I gave you guys your love, um, my appreciation, because there is no Wild Podcast without you guys. There is no Wild Podcast um, without you guys tuning in every single episode that drops. It really means the world to me. I know I say this every single time, but truly the truth. It really, really is. I truly do appreciate it. But as always, how you guys doing? What's going on out there? Hope all is well. Hope that your day is being blessed as always. I hope that, um, that this week is going to be another amazing week for you. And of course, as always, if not, I hope that changes. I hope that turns around. Hope it really, really, really does. You know, things can be challenging at times. Things can be difficult at times. And sometimes it could be a person who could ruin it. Sometimes it could just be, um, we just could wake up and just not be in the greatest mood. Or sometimes we just have just too many obstacles that we, obstacles that we feel like that's in our way. And we become very, very overwhelmed. We become very discouraged at times, but listen, God is with you. God is working through it. And one thing that he does not want us to do is making the excuses on why we cannot continue to live out his calling and what he has called us to do. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into prayer and we can start with this week's conversation. Heavenly Father, you get all the glory, you get all the praise. And we just ask you, God, to bless this conversation, to bless those who are listening, God. I pray, Father God, that you will cleanse their heart and cleanse their mind with this conversation. I pray, Father God, that things that they've been praying for, things they've been asking for, Father God, that you hear their prayers, you hear their cries. And I pray that you will answer their prayers according to your will, Father God. I pray that you will deliver them, Father God, from any weakness or temptation that they are suffering from. I pray, Father God, that broken relationships broken relationships will be healed and will be restored, Father God. I pray that you would give them the wisdom and the knowledge on how to navigate on relationships with people, as this is what we're going to talk about today. And I just thank you. I thank you, God, for just the roof over my head, the roof over their head. I pray for the food that we have. I pray, Father God, for just all the essential items that keeps us afloat. And I pray that if those who are lacking any of those things, Father God, I pray that you will bless them. Um, with that, Father God, I pray that you will not give them um, the spirit of the spirit to worry, but the spirit of faith. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, there's this quote that I saw that Toby Mac. Toby Mac, he is a Christian artist who I follow, big fan of, and he has these different scriptures that he would not scriptures. Well, he does actually um, drop scriptures as well, but he as the different quotes. And I don't know if they're coming directly from him or if it is something that he sees and he just posts, but either way, I love it. It's called Toby speaks. And one thing that he dropped on his IG page that stood out to me was he dropped this quote says, don't allow your wounds to turn you into a person that you are not. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And I feel like that was so powerful because how often and how common it is for us that, when somebody hurts us, somebody gives us pain that we become that person who hurt us. Right. We start to like, you know what, man, screw it. Yo, I don't trust people. I hate people. Um, people are dishonest. So I become dishonest. Right. Or people are wicked. People are evil. So I become wicked and evil or people are not loving. So I'm not going to be loving. We basically become the person who hurt us. And that's not what God has called us to be. We're always called to love. Right. Yes, we could call with, we could love with boundaries, which we should, especially with somebody who is dishonest, who is not trustworthy, who is conniving, who is wicked, who is evil, because those people do exist. There are a lot of people like that that do exist, but there's also a lot of great, amazing people. Like if I was to become the person who I felt in the past has hurt me, I wouldn't be with my wife, right? I wouldn't be able to trust my wife because I would take all my anger and all my frustration out on her. And, and to be honest, in the beginning of the relationship, you know, I kind of did that without realizing that. 
and that let me know that I had some work that I had to do for myself. And I'll be honest, I don't blame the person who I felt hurt me or disappointed me. I don't blame her. I really don't. Um, because she has her own hurt and trauma that she probably had to deal with and probably didn't know how to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? She didn't know how to like, you know, she projected it wrong or projected on the wrong person. Right. And sometimes we'll take the same knife, the same knife that's, that stabbed us and use the same knife to stab somebody else. Right. And we continue to bleed on people that who don't deserve it, who don't deserve it at all. And that's the wrong way to do and one of the ways to stop that is by forgiveness. And I talked about forgiveness before, but we're going to go into uh, a part two, I guess you can say of it, right? Of on forgiveness, because I feel like that's one of the biggest things that we struggle, especially this day and age. There's so much that's going on in this world um, and, in, and, in, and in this country uh, specifically. There's a lot of divide. There's a lot of anger. Um, there's a lot of judgment. There's so much that is going on. We, we're more divided we've ever been. Right. Whether if it's, you know, one person who believes in being a Democrat, one person believes in being a Republican, whether if somebody is pro police or 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 against police, pro gun, you know, what I'm saying, you know, pro life or whatever it is, like no matter what the issue is, we're very divided. Right. And we can give different opinions. It's very normal to have different opinions, but it's gotten to the point where it's like if you have a different opinion. You can see, you know, you're you're almost like, yo, it's that mentality. You're if you're not for us, you're against us, right? And I used to fall into that trap too, to be quite honest, right? And to the point where there's people I didn't want to talk to or deal with because they had a different view from them. Now, of course, obviously, if somebody has a hateful view, a racist view, um, a view to oppress people, then 100, that's not something that I can ever stand for. I will always be against. 100 percent right especially when it comes to oppression when it comes to black people right and really all people but specifically black people for me because i am a black man who lives in this country and i've seen what oppression does and i've experienced it but one thing that i've also learned through my journey as a christ believer is that um i can still love somebody even if i have a different view a different view from what they have my goal is never to sabotage anybody at all. My goal is never to hurt anybody, at least not intentionally. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes we could unintentionally hurt somebody, right? Sometimes we could unintentionally disappoint somebody. And of course, when we do that, we want them to forgive us, right? We want them to have mercy on us, right? Like, yo, my bad, forgive me. I didn't know. Or I made a mistake. I didn't mean to um, intentionally hurt you. I didn't mean to disappoint you. I didn't mean to offend you, right? And if somebody's coming to you with a pure heart, then you should uh, you should honor and respect their um, respect them for wanting to ask for forgiveness. I was in the airport. Um. Last you no, know, a couple of weeks ago, I was flying out to go pick up my daughter from Atlanta, and picked her up, and then we we're flying out of Florida for my niece's graduation. And while we we're waiting, there was this guy, and this other guy. They basically almost got into an altercation. You just st started hearing yelling, and I turn around and I remember this guy. He was yelling, he was cursing, he was like, "Yo, yo," because I, I don't know what started it, but all I remember the guy was saying is like, "Yo." Yo, you better back away from you. Don't know me. I'm, I'm going to knock you out. And the other guy, you could tell he was a little bit shorter than him. And he was somewhat trying to defuse it, saying, my bad. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mean to like offend you, whatever it was. Again, I don't know what caused the altercation. I don't even know what they really was beefing about. All I know is one person who was like, yo, get away from me. Or I'm going to knock your teeth out. And the other one was like, yo, like being the less of a, the less aggressor was like yo my bad dude walks off right the other guy you could tell he's still hot he's still you know vexed he's still pretty upset the guy comes back and he was like yo, i just want to come i just want to come back and say yo my bad i apologize whatever i did offend you my bad the other guy still was not trying to hear it 
He was like, yo, you come back over here again. I'm going to put hands on you. You got the wrong one. You don't know me. I'm the wrong one to mess with this, that, and the third. The guy was like, yo, okay, I understand. I just want to apologize. He's like, yo, get the F away from me. Like he was not trying to hear that. Right. And I'll be honest, I was slightly disappointed. And the reason why I was disappointed was because I don't know what caused or started the altercation. And, and quite frankly, it's not really my business, but it was like, I was literally right next to it. Right. Me and my daughter. But I thought that would have been an example of where you could have an altercation and or a verbal altercation. Right. Because they didn't get physical. But you have one person who's going forth and apologizing for whatever reason that caused it. And the other guy was not trying to hear it. And yes, he it's his right to like, hey, I'm not accepting your apology. Right. I don't know the guy. Again, I don't know what started it. But if the other guy came and I can't tell somebody how to react or how to feel. But I can say this is that if it was the other way around. Right. Wouldn't we want that person to forgive us or at least acknowledge like, yo, I'm humbling myself in this situation in front of a bunch of people. And it's acknowledged like, yo, I made this. I guess I did something that got you to the point where you felt that violence was going to be the only answer. Why not accept this the forgiveness again? Doesn't mean that you have to forget, but just like accept it. And that's something I feel like we need more of because you just see this divide, right? You see where there's, this is an example where you, you, you can see unity. You can see two brothers where they could come together. Like, you know what? It ain't about nothing. Again, depending on what it is. I don't, again, I don't know what it is, but forgiveness is so important. I'm not saying forget, but I'm saying forgiveness is so important. To where this is where we can see healing within our community. We can see healing within our own personal life because then now we don't have to feel that if I see this person or I have to deal with this person or interact with this person, that my only reaction is going to be violence or my only reaction is going to be anger and wrath because that's what it was with that guy. Like, if that the way the guy the way it seemed like if this guy was in his presence, his only reaction was I'm going to harm this guy. And to me, that's power. That's power. That's been, tra that's been uh, transmitted. Right. And transfer transferred to, I'm not going to say the other individual. I'm going to say the situation. Right. And I feel like that's all the enemy. And then now what it does is stirs a pot because if they were to, let's say, cross paths again, who's to say that this guy still would not hold on to this grudge or this hurt or this anger that he has for this individual. And he could be having a good day. I say this all the time. You can have an amazing day. But the moment that this person that you have a personal problem with um, or somebody who has hurt you shows up, everything changes. And it's like, yo, why do we want to go through life like that? Like, what is what is the point? Really, really, what is the point? This is why forgiveness is so important because then now you, you're taking away that power and you're releasing it. You're giving it away. You're like, hey, I'm not going to be dealing with this. So I'm going to really just give it to God, right? And let God handle this. But I'm never going to give this situation power. Because really, sometimes it's not even about the person. It's the situation that you have with that person. Yes, it can be the person, but it's the situation. And so it's just forgiven that. Because when you forgive the situation, what that does is it helps you forgive that person. But it, again, it also helps you put boundaries around that person. So you know, like, hey, I'm I'm going to love this person, but I'm going to love them from a distance. Or I love them enough where I'm not going to allow them to affect how I feel, how I think you know, change my mood. I say this all the time. We want to think and react logically, not emotionally. Cause a lot of times we will react with anger. And I know nowadays, like that's something that we are just so accustomed to doing is to react off of anger. Cause we feel like we get results with the results that we want the results that we need. And sometimes, yes, we need to re we need to move with force. 
I'm not gonna say with aggression. I'm gonna say with force because I feel when you remove, when you react with force, there's a way you can react with force with logically. Like we're, we could play chess with it, not checkers. Because when we react just off pure emotion, we can get reckless, and now we're playing checkers. We're playing checkers with our emotions. We're playing checkers with our reaction. We're playing checkers on how we handle situations and the wrong moves can be made and what we intended to happen or the re or, or the reaction that we expect to happen does not happen right we need to kind of change the way we look at and think about those things because look how god gives us forgives us look how god um gives us mercy every single time like just imagine if, if you know we did something to really tick god off right and we're like, yo, God, my bad. I apologize. And God's like, yo, I don't want you in my presence. Get out of here. If you come back around over here or you call my name, yo, I am going to um, pour down wrath upon your life. You're going to feel the wrath of God automatically. And yes, God can be angry. You know what I'm saying? But he's slow to anger, as the word says. But imagine he wasn't. Imagine God was more emotional versus logical. Listen, a lot of us wouldn't be here. A lot of us wouldn't have the things that we have. We would have no mercy. You know what I'm saying? It, none of that stuff would happen. We would have to go back to like the old days in the Old Testament and we have to find something to sacrifice, right? That's what we have to do. We would have to find something to sacrifice like a, a goat or a cattle, whatever it is that was being used in the Old Testament to go ahead and sacrifice so we could receive God's mercy. But God, you know, sent, he sent his, um, you know, his only son, Jesus Christ um, and sacrifice and had him sacrifice on the cross so the blood of Jesus could cleanse us, cleanse our sins. But it's all about what? Forgiveness. That was a way of God showing his forgiveness. Like, I forgive you guys for what you've done through my son, Jesus Christ. So it doesn't have to be all about wrath. It doesn't have to be like God is like, man, here come James coming to me again praying. Yo, doesn't he know I'm angry at him? Does he know I'm ticked off at him? I ain't trying to hear that right now. Yo, blocking his blessings. I ain't trying to hear all of that. Just imagine God did it every single time. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. It would be a whole different God, but that's not how God is. God is consistent. God is a God of order, but he's also a God of mercy and love. Let's go ahead and go into scripture, as always. We start with Matthew 6, verse 15. It says, but if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Ooh, that is so important. So God is saying like, hey, you want me to forgive you, but you can't forgive your own brother. Nah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. If you really want to understand how I operate, the love that I have, the mercy of me, that I need you to display the same thing to your brothers and sisters. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? We can't ask for something that we're not willing to give to somebody else. It doesn't it it does not work that way. It's actually a selfish way of thinking, to be quite honest, in my personal opinion. Mark eleven, verse twenty five says, But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too. That's Mark eleven verse 25 so when we're coming to god we're having a conversation with god we're praying to god god wants to make sure like i always say when i normally pray i always ask god for forgiveness right i always ask god for forgiveness but also <clears throat> i also you know what included my prayer at times is forgive me if i have not forgiven anybody place it in my heart if there's those i need to forgive and and yes there are people who i may not get along with there may there are people who i may not have the strongest relationship with but I've learned to forgive them and I, and, 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 and forgive them for who they are because people are flawed. People are always going to disappoint you. That's just the way it is. Like there's no way around it. People are going to disappoint people. People are going to hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. But if you want to help them heal, pray for them, forgive them, like pour love into them. Again, I'm not saying that you need to like, hit them up every day, you know, have your guards down, you know, when you're hanging around them or you're talking to them, 
and be naive and gullible on how the relationship that you have with that person and thinking like, yo, it's going to be all Gucci. It's going to be all great. And you know, and all this other stuff, this person's never going to backstab me again. And all this other stuff. I'm not saying that when you ask for forgiveness or you're forgiving that person, what I am saying is like you, um, again, you put the boundaries around, it's just like a fence that you have in your house. You put a fence around your house to prevent certain things to jump over to, or to, to get access to your backyard. Right. But you still have a view of everything outside of your backyard. Right. So if you have like, let's say a neighbor who you may not get along with, um, actually that example, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go towards that direction. Um, but just put a fence, um, around, which is your boundary around people. And then you can just love them from a distance. You can still be respectful. Allow them to drown in their own misery. You don't need to pour the water to help them drown their misery. That's not what God wants you to do because then now you're being just as wicked and evil as them. You get what I'm saying? Like what joy should we receive or we should have seen somebody else suffer for me? I, that's something I just don't understand. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. And because when we're going through our sorrow and our pain, because it's going to happen, wouldn't we want somebody to pray for us? Wouldn't, wouldn't we want somebody to confide in us? Wouldn't we want God to forgive us for the mistakes that we've made? So we should extend that. And, and I was somebody who was not like that. I really was the opposite. I truly, truly, truly was, you know, where the moment that you cross a certain line with me, that was it. I didn't care what happened to you. I didn't care what took place. I was not a type of person to forgive. I would hold on to, um, I would have a grudge against that person. They were dead to me in my, in, in my eyes. But then I realized like, why? Like, why? What, what, what is the point of that? That's me holding on to pain. I'm becoming a prisoner of, the pain that this person has caused me or the disappointment that person caused me. And nobody wants to be a prisoner of anything because there's nothing to, there's nothing great that comes out of that. To be honest, like you're really fooling yourself. If you feel like that, Hey, you know, my life is great, but this person's what this person did to me does not affect me. Because what happens is the way that person hurts you shows up in other relationships that you have with other people. Because then you may not trust somebody if they somebody, let's say, lied to you or maybe was not honest with you about something. Or maybe somebody did something that you felt like, yo, you you, you disappointed me in this. You dropped the ball on this. Your expectations for people becomes either so low that you accept anything or become so high that any little thing that anytime they miss that mark, it, you shut everything down and you're never going to be able to build any form of a solid relationship, whether if it's with a partner, um, your spouse, kids, coworkers, friends with that type of mentality. And it's just—it's really just unhealthy. It really, really is. Um, <clears throat> let's go to um, Psalms fifty-one, verse nine through thirteen. And this is with this is when David. We all know story of David when he um, slept with Bathsheba, had his man killed, and then he got called out on it. He got called out, and then he started to—he basically started crying out to God for forgiveness. And here he says, don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and make me, make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to the rebels and they will return to you. That's Psalms 51 verse 9 through 13. So here is David. He's crying out to God because he made this commit this terrible act, terrible, terrible act. He had his man killed because he slept with his wife, got her pregnant. This is a lifetime movie itself right here. 
And of course, God sees it all. He calls him out on it, right? Because God, God had expectations for David, but God forgave David. Now, did David had to, were there consequences of it? Of course, there was consequences from what David did, but God still forgave David. And David was able to move forward and still live out to be one of the greatest kings ever. And so, but it started with asking for forgiveness. Forgiveness. And that's the key thing there. It's not pride or having ego because those things can kill us. It did that with Saul, right? Remember, remember who Saul was to David, right? David was Saul's um, armor bearer, but he became very envious and jealous of David. But no matter how envious Saul was, and no matter how much he tried to kill David, David forgave Saul and had mercy on him because David had he had a, you know he had opportunities to take Saul out, but he did it. He left it up to God. He left it up to God. And you see how David was rewarded for it. He became one of the greatest kings, right? He ruled um, he ruled Israel for many, 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 many years. King of David, a man of my heart, as the word says. And that's to me, that starts with mercy. That starts with forgiveness of what David had, not ego and pride. The downfall of Saul was what? His ego and his pride. That was a downfall of Saul because even when um, David forgave him, his pride still was there. And so we don't want to be like Saul. We don't want to be about be like other people that we see where their pride, their ego, and not and not forgiving blocks their blessings, prevents them receiving some of the gifts and blessings that God wants to give them because they're holding on to that baggage of hurt and trauma and forgiveness. There's so much power in that in healing. There's so much power in forgiving. And we don't want to be like what Toby Max says is allowing wounds to turn into the person that you're not. You went from being this great person with a great heart to where it's like, you know what? I'm a person now that's full of pain and all I want to do is people to feel the pain that I have. That does not heal your pain. That's like drowning your sorrow in alcohol. Yeah, you may feel good. You feel, you know, a little tipsy and you feel like you kind of forgot what take place. But then after a while, what happens when you sober back up, you're back in that pain again. Why not have the ultimate freedom by releasing it and just giving it to God? And you just move on with your life. That's the beauty of forgiveness. That's the beauty of not turning into the person who hurt you. So I hope this message serves you well. I hope this message really helps those who are struggling with forgiveness. Um, and not allowing, you know, somebody's wound to be your wound. We never want to do that. Until the next episode. One love. I just had to do that. Just had to do it. I know this was a heavy conversation. One love, y'all.